We just got back from a week-long vacation and the garden is still alive and thriving. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly the steps I took to make sure that the garden is ready for when we're away. Hey guys and welcome back to Mini Urban Farm, a channel about urban gardening and homesteading in the suburbs. In this video, I am going to walk you through everything I did to prepare my garden before I went on vacation and even show you exactly how we came back to the garden. I've also written an entire article on this exact same topic on the blog, so I will leave that in the description below if you want to check it out. But let's go ahead and get started with number one, which is how to water your plants when on vacation. So I recently set up a drip irrigation system in my garden, um, which makes it really easy for us to go on a trip and make sure that the garden gets watered. However, if you watched some of my previous videos, I did talk a lot about overwatering um, your plants and your garden. So one of the most important things I did before we left on our trip is to check the weather forecast. Now it did say it was going to rain about half the time we were away um, so I took that into account it's not exactly accurate right sometimes it rains when it, it's not supposed to rain sometimes it doesn't rain when it's supposed to um, but for the most part I knew that I was gonna have to adjust my drip irrigation system just a little bit so instead of letting it run every single day um, for the 20 minutes where I've kind of gotten the uh, the sweet spot for my garden down I let it run every other day for about 15 minutes to account for the fact that it was going to rain a whole bunch so basically what I did I came over here to my irrigation timer um, um, and it is on auto run right now. If you can see here, um, it is set to four days a week. So it's basically just every other day. I'm not sure if it's focusing here or not, um, but it says Tuesday, Thursday, and then I have it set for Saturday and Sunday as well, um, just depending on when we're actually leaving. Now this irrigation timer actually allows you to set up um, the start time um, and you can set it for twice a day. I limited it to just the once a day at 10 a.m. Um, which is usually about where this garden starts getting a lot of sun um, for 15 minutes and then I set the run days for those days over there. You can actually turn it off when there is a lot of rain or you can cancel watering for the day um, or you can actually decide to water extra which is one of the main reasons why I really like this system but after that I just set it to auto and it ran on those days. Now if you're not using a drip irrigation system like I do, um, the way I used to do it was just basically manually watering the plants and so I got a family member or friend to just come out here and water and I would show them which plants needed what. Um, right now on the drip irrigation system it's great because each plant is just getting either the drip line or the sprinkler emitter so depending on the type of plant is where they're positioned um, in the actual drip irrigation system but if you have some sort of like a chart or you know this kind of plant needs this amount of watering you can provide that list to whoever is watering your garden and just make sure that they are looking for you know signs of overwatering. let them know that if it rained that day don't go out and water your garden um, you know the last thing you want is to come back to dead plants because um, one of your family members or friends didn't really know what they were doing and that's definitely happened to me before so just give them kind of like a quick outline um, and remember that it's it's always better to underwater by a little bit than to overwater a ton because your plants will actually go searching deeper down in the ground for that water all right so the next thing I did to prepare my garden for vacation is to harvest everything the very last thing you want is to come back to rotted plants or plants that are just past their ripening season and you did not harvest them um, so basically right before we go on vacation either the night before or the morning of I take everything um, that is red or you know just about getting ripe depending on what the plant is I take everything off make sure that everything is harvested that way when we're on vacation there's nothing that is like falling off the plants and just dying in the beds um, I obviously want to harvest everything I can from my garden um, if you go on vacation the next day you might not be able to use everything that you just finished harvesting however what I usually do is I'll take it and give it to family or friends that are staying in the area and then that way they can benefit from it the next thing you want to do is to trellis everything trellis anything that needs to be trellised make sure that everything is attached somehow to the trellises um, because your plants will continue to grow even when you're not here just because you go on vacation does not mean your plants also take a break. So trellis everything that needs to be trellised. Make sure everything is held up and supported. That way nothing is falling over, toppling over, um, and laying on the floor when it's not supposed to be. That's a really important step that you want to do just so that you're not getting diseased plants when you come back. 
Which brings us to pest and disease control. Now, if you watched any of my other videos, you know that I have struggled a lot with pest and disease this season in the garden, um, a lot more than other seasons. And I think it has something to do with all the construction that is going on. We live in suburbia and there is just a ton of construction in this neighborhood. Um, they are just ripping up everything, which forces a lot of the pests out of where they normally live. And they have found their home on their plants, unfortunately. So one thing that I really made sure to do before I went on this trip was to ensure that everything um, pest and disease control related was taken care of. I laid down my diatomaceous earth, my BT, um, everything that I could do to prevent the spread of disease and pest um, that's exactly what I did. I went through and I took off anything on the plants that were dead, anything that the plants didn't need anymore. Um, it's just basically weighing down the plants so that it's preventing it from growing new leaves. So I took off anything that did not look like it was healthy or thriving. And then I used my organic pest control methods to just try and control it while I'm not here. Um, I have talked before about how you really need to be catching disease and pests early on, right? Once you let it spread, it, it kind of just kills off your plants. And then you get to the point of no return where you really can't save your plants from all the pests and disease. So you wanna make sure you're catching it early. If you're not here, like we weren't, right? We went on a week long vacation. Um, you're not here to catch it every day or whenever it is that you're checking your plants consistently. And some of those things can just spread very, very fast. So you wanna make sure you have some sort of pest or disease proofing. Um, it's not gonna be 100%. It's really not going to, you know, cover everything that could go wrong in your garden, but at least you're kind of, you know, trying to put a fail safe in place just in case. I will say that I put in a lot of diatomaceous earth before I left, and I had been picking off all of these army worms and cutworms um, from my tomatoes because my tomatoes were completely getting destroyed. And then I made sure that I wasn't overwatering right with the timer um, for the irrigation system to try and reduce some of those pests. Now I came back and I actually have red tomatoes that have not been destroyed by cutworms on some of my tomato plants, which has been a very successful week because the majority of the previous weeks, um, I have not been getting too many red tomatoes because by the time that I let the tomatoes turn red on the vines, they are getting destroyed by pests. So I came back and we actually have quite a few ripened tomatoes and we're actually able to eat them so that was definitely a success this time around okay and so the last thing that you want to make sure you do before you go on vacation and this one is important but hopefully it's not as important as the other ones if you've done everything right is to have someone come in and check on the garden now I don't really have too many friends around here or family members that garden a lot um, the majority of people I know are gardening are online or across different social network platforms so I don't really have anyone close by that can come and make sure that the plants are in tip-top shape but I do have neighbors around and family members that can come and check and make sure nothing looks catastrophically wrong right when I say come and check in on the garden I'm not asking them to water manually because I have my drip irrigation system set up already I'm not even asking them to spray any pest control or any of that stuff I'm just asking them to come and look and make sure all of the plants are not dead now if there is some sort of a problem then you're able to walk them through it you know like hey turn off the watering system or hey you know maybe this plant needs a little bit more water so just to have an extra set of eyes when you're not here is really good um, I've done that in the past this time I had someone come in um, I think it was once or twice they came and just made sure you know everything looks more or less like it's supposed to they don't really know what they're doing but if there was anything catastrophic that did happen they would be able to call me and I would be able to walk through more or less what's going on so this time around, I was actually really happy with the results I got when I came back from vacation. Um, usually we take a trip anywhere between two to four times a year. Now with the whole pandemic thing, it's probably been a little bit less, but we have been traveling on shorter weekend trips. Um, I'm not as concerned when we go away for the weekend because generally I check on the garden the day we leave and the day we come back and it only leaves one or two days in between. Now this time we were gone for an entire week. Um, we went out of state to visit some family. So I was a little concerned that I was gonna come back and everything was gonna kind of be out of place, um, but it wasn't. It really turned out fine. I have tons of new stuff growing. I have red tomatoes, like I mentioned before. I have tons of beans that I need to harvest. I even have a giant okra pod. Um, so I'm really happy that everything turned out the way it was supposed to. There are some things that, you know, I really wish I would have been here to address, but it's really not the end of the world. You know, some of my um, tips of the tomato plants look like they were eaten by cutworms, um, which they probably were because I am seeing some cutworms around the tomato crops, but it's definitely not as much as it could have been if I hadn't implemented all these things before we left. So hopefully some of these things can help save your garden when you're on vacation and just give you a little bit of peace of mind that your garden is taken care of as best as it can be when you leave. Thanks so much for watching. If you want more urban gardening, urban homesteading, 
urban chicken videos, all of that good stuff. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.